Looking for magic cards or magic carps? On the new CFB Marketplace you can buy sealed products and singles directly from local game stores. Support the channel by using the referral code LVD at checkout. Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl Games video. Today we're taking a look at a junt colored haste deck featuring Ognis as a Dragon Slash as her commander, voted on by my supporters on Patreon, a 4 mana 3 3 legendary Vyoshina warrior with haste, saying whenever a creature you control with haste attacks, create a tapped treasure token. It's a very powerful ability if we can curve out with a whole bunch of haste creatures. And then taking a look at the rest of our deck, I've split it up into a few categories, starting out with Spot Removal, where we've got a usual suspect with Fatal Push, Lightning Bolt, Feed the Swarm can also answer enchantments, Heartless Ank, Power Ward Kill, and a Braid to also deal with artifacts. Then at the next category are some of the Treasure Payoff cards, cards that can make use of the extra treasure we generate with Ognis, assuming we can get it going. And those include Magda, which can sack 5 treasures to search up any artifact or dragon, and we do have some powerful dragons at the top end of our curve with Inferno of the Star Mounts and Darigas as examples. Then we also have a Reckless Fireweaver dealing 1 damage to each opponent whenever an artifact enters a battlefield under our control, so that can start pinging the opponent. Captain Lannery just makes treasure when it attacks by herself, it's already a pretty good card individually, but we can also sacrifice a treasure to give it 1 additional power until end of turn, so also synergizes quite nicely with Ognis. Professional Facebreaker can sacrifice a treasure to exile the top card of our library, and we may play that card this turn, so it can generate a ton of card advantage. And important to note about cards like Face Breaker and even Magda, is that we can also sacrifice tapped treasures, so we don't need the treasure to be untapped, which also makes a big difference as Ognis generates tapped treasures, which we usually don't get to use right away. We also have Zorn doubling our treasure production, then Mayhem Devil deals one damage to any targets whenever a player sacrifices a permanent, including treasure tokens, so that can deal a ton of damage. Stimulus Package generates two treasures when it enters, and we can sack a treasure at any point to create a 1 1 green and white citizen creature token, so that can help as a go wide, then a core vault, another great sacrifice synergy card, as it will enter the battlefield sacrificing another permanent, and whenever we do sacrifice another permanent, put a plus one counter on it and draw a card. And finally, a marionette master might be one of my favorite finishers in the deck, a six mana 1 3 with fabricate 3, so when it enters, we either generate three 1 1 servo tokens, or we can put three plus one counters on it instead, and then whenever an artifact we control is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, the opponent loses life equal to the marionette master's power, so if it enters as a 4-powered creature, and we have a few treasure tokens laying around, we can potentially kill the opponent on the spot. Then the next category is Mana Acceleration, where Kalein also kind of counts as a treasure payoff card, as now creatures enter the battlefield with plus one counters if we spend mana from treasures to cast them. Then we've got an Archomancer discarding red and green spells, as our deck is mostly red and green, just splashing a few black cards. Arcane Signet, of course, and Domri Anarch of Bolas gives our team one additional power, can generate mana, making our creatures uncounterable, and can find opposing creatures. Then the next section is the Utility section, where we have Deadly Dispute, sacking an artifact or creature to draw to and make a treasure. We've got Fable providing a nice bit of card selection, can generate a Shaman which also makes more treasure, and Reflection of Kiki Jiki also great with our creatures. We've got Chandra which can maybe replay spells out of the graveyard, so great with our cheap spot removal, and also generates a pair of hasty elemental tokens which can maybe generate some treasure with Ogonis. And then we've got Guardian Project as a nice card draw engine, as our deck does mostly consist of creatures. We've got Ember Cleave as another finisher, giving our creature double strike and trample, as well as one additional power and Godfarrow's Gift, another nice card in the more grindy matchups, allowing us to recur our creatures from the graveyard in the form of 4 4 blank zombie tokens that also gain haste, so still synergizes with Ognis. And then we get to the biggest section, which is just all the haste creatures in the deck, and I'll quickly go over them. We've got Beaumont Courier, which can also provide card advantage, Firebrand can also be sacrificed to deal 1 damage, Kumano provides a ton of utility, we've got Battery, which can be reconfigured to give another creature plus 1 plus 1 and haste, Ginger Brute can potentially become unblockable, Big Spender from Alchemy, we've got Adversary replaying spells out of our graveyard, Earthshaker Kenra can also be eternalized out of the graveyard and can prevent the opponent from blocking, we've got Fearsome Whelp discounting some of our dragons in hand, 
Got Rumble of the Rich also providing card advantage. Dreadhorde Butcher keeps on growing if it hits the opponent, eventually explodes like a huge piñata. Headliner a 3-3 haste, but does make us discard a card with Echo. We've got the Brushfire Elemental, which grows with a landfall. Then at 3 mana, the Crasher can prevent the opponent from blocking with Exert. We've got Broken Brow, which can also potentially grow if we have a larger attacking creature. Legion Warboss can generate a few hasty Goblin tokens to mentor onto. We've got Reckless Stormseeker to give other creatures haste. Got Phoenix of Ash, which can be escaped out of the graveyard to keep coming back. Crew Captain comes into play with Indestructible. We've got the Creepy Puppeteer at 4 mana to potentially grow another creature into a 4-3. We've got Hazoret, which is an indestructible god and can only attack if we're empty-handed or close to empty-handed. We've got Hellrider providing a ton of damage if it attacks alongside a few other creatures. We've got Thundering Raichu, which can also put plus 1 counters on the team and then also deals damage equal to the amount of modified creatures we control. Questing Beast, of course, doesn't need an explanation. Ton of text, very powerful. Then Ulvenwald Oddity, 4-4. Trample Haste can also be transformed to become even more powerful. Grand Warlord Arada provides extra mana if we attack with the team, and the partners can put more counters on our team, giving them haste as well. And then at 5 mana, Goldspan can generate a ton of treasure. We've got Glorybringer to exert and take out a non dragon. Urubrask makes our team fast while making the opponent's team slow. We've got Urubrask the second providing card advantage. Volatile Arsonist can deal a bunch of damage. We've got Inferno to fly over, and then a Vorinclax to double up our counters while having the opponents, and then Darigas as another nice finisher that can keep coming back if it dies. And then our mana base, pretty straightforward, lots of untapped lands, a few utility lands, including Castle Embrath to pump the team, then of the Bugbear as a creature land, and then a few of the channel lands with Crucible making a pair of hasty tokens to also synergize with Ognis and Buseju to maybe destroy an artifact or enchantment, and then a few fetch lands to also synergize with our Brushfire Elemental. So that's the deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play, facing Tiny Bones, so a discard deck. So getting a Guardian Project in play would be a nice way to kind of beat the discard effects and win a longer grindy game. So I'll give this a shot. And then we've got a nice curve here of a Fireweaver into Domri potentially. Although I guess our land comes into play tapped. So I have to decide if I want to play Domri on curve or Fireweaver. And I guess if we get project in play first, then we'll get to draw a card of Fireweaver, so maybe that's still better. So we'll play Domri. Plus... and pass it back. Could already play a Goldspan Dragon next turn. So still unsure if we want to get the project in play first. Disciple makes us discard. I guess Fireweaver is the lowest impact card, although Vorinclax might be the most ambitious to actually cast. So it's a close call. Um, I guess we'll get rid of Fireweaver, and then I'll maybe try to play Guardian Project next turn. Power Kill can take out. Tiny Bones, so now I'm more in favor of Gold Span plus Power Word Kill. I'll get a Forest. Attack for five. Kill Tiny Bones. Although I guess we could wait until the opponent's turn. Sure. Maybe that changes the opponent's play pattern as well next turn. Liliana's triumph to make us sacrifice. Sure, we'll have to use the treasure now. And then next turn play Guardian Project most likely. Four and clanks down. Right on my noggin. Eggs is my bread. Okay, so we're on empty, but at least Ognis can draw a card when we play it. Raider's Wake. Gonna pile on the damage here. Ooh, you think I'm just gonna let you pace me? 
Okay, Fearsome Whelp's not bad. Don't have the mana to play Whelp and Ognus. I guess we can start with Whelp. And then see what we draw off Guardian Projects. Fatal Push can come in handy. So we'll hit for two. Elspeth's Nightmare kills Fearsome Whelp. So they wouldn't be replaying Tiny Bones. Midnight Reaper we can kill now with Fatal Push since they killed my creature. So that might be the preferred play over killing one of the 1-1s. One and that also allows Ognis to attack. Probably gonna lose Domri, but so be it. And then... What do we want to do with this crossroads is also an interesting question. Probably want to play Ognis first and then maybe scry with crossroads. Phoenix we don't mind discarding and then we can escape before the opponent empties our graveyard. And Ember Cleave could be pretty decent too. Although there is a chance that we won't be able to actually use it. Opponent sees Phoenix. Seven mana for a Thought Seize to take Phoenix. But then we can just escape it before Nightmare reaches the third chapter. Domri down. I'm not finished with you. Not by a long shot. And tiny bones. Plus a painful bond to draw. Okay. I think escaping Phoenix before it gets exiled might beat out going for Embercleave, although there's also a chance that they make us discard Embercleave next turn. And that would hit for quite a bit of damage here. So it's definitely a close call, but this also draws an extra card, so we may be able to draw into something else useful. And doesn't matter what we exile now. Ginger Brute, okay. Can play that as well. And then can use the Ginger Brute's ability. Opponent forced to chump. Falls to five. Good chance our opponent cleans out our hand here, but they still need to deal with a Phoenix of Ash. It's going to be a duress costing the opponent one life. Takes Ember Cleave. Phase Breaker would still provide quite a bit of card advantage with all the treasures. And we can even sacrifice a tapped treasure. So that's a nice upside. And the our opponent concedes. Too many angles they're getting attacked from. Even if they have an answer for Phoenix, there's still a face breaker to worry about. And we might just be able to escape the Phoenix once again. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Facing mono black vampires with Soren. Pretty scary deck. And our hand's not ideal as we don't really get to curve out the way we'd like. Uh, do have some removal with Fatal Push Power Ward Kill, so that's nice. So is this keepable? With two lands? I don't think so, we'll take that free mulligan. Another two lander, but this one at least has lannery to generate extra mana. And we can somewhat curve out. So I'll give it a shot. Okay, so we'll play Kumano plus Proving Grounds, and then Captain Lannery with a plus one counter on curve. Bloodcaster. We could kill, but 
can just attack past it and then maybe keep Lightning Bolt for Sorin. Getting the Butcher in play with an extra counter also would have been pretty synergistic, but need the extra mana. Silver Smote Ghoul we can exile thanks to etching, so that's a big deal. So we get to untap, and then I think the play is Ognis, attack, and before they get a chance to block using the treasure from Lannery, we can Lightning Bolt. So that's fine. So I'm going full control just in case here. Make a bunch of treasure, and one of them will be untapped. So we can bolt the ghoul. There we go. That's exiled for good. Otherwise, ghoul, a very scary combo with Sorin, as I can keep sacking it to deal 3 damage again 3 and get it back end of turn. And next turn we're ready to Ember Cleave. Vampire attacks. Probably get sacrificed to deal 3 here to Ognis or Lannery. Takes out Lannery. So. Let's see here. Can play Fireweaver plus Dreadhorde Butcher, and that would ping the opponent for a bunch with a Fireweaver. Um, and then we can still Ember Cleave as well, so that looks pretty good. Opponent may be holding priority because of the Blood Token. If they had a Fatal Push, they probably would have killed Ognis thanks to Revolt. So I don't think that's what they're holding here. And then probably just go face, would deal 8. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, exactly. And then I guess Ember Cleave entering also triggers Fire Weaver, so that's one more. Ember Cleave on Butcher also pretty synergistic. I think we're still better off putting it on Ognis, but. Both are fine. And there we have it, so a nice aggressive kill. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Kethys as a hidden hand. And yeah, three four lines up quite nicely against our aggressive creatures, but I guess Puppeteer can maybe grow one of our smaller creatures to attack past it, so I'll give this a shot. Turn 1 Temple. We could play turn 1 Beaumont Courier, even though we may not be able to play a 3-drop on curve, although we're quite likely to find another untapped land along the way. Okay, get in for one again, and play Proving Grounds, and hope to find an untapped land next turn. If not, we can still play an Archomancer. Opponent can play Kathis, goes for Oath of Kaya instead, and we're not gonna sack Bowman Courier. Alright, there's my land. So we've got quite a few options. I'm lacking Captain Lannery, which will make a treasure, and then next turn with the second treasure it can attack past Kethys as well. Although Legion War Boss also totally reasonable. Time for Kethys. Hazret's not bad either. So I can play Puppeteer, and then attack with both. If 
5-3 Captain Landry. Opponent trades off. And this can fetch a forest, perhaps. Five mana for Cathus once again. And we have options, but kind of lacking Ourobrask. Alternatively, let's see here, when this attacks... Yeah, I don't think we'll be able to grow the 1-1 one -one Goblin from the Puppeteer. So that's maybe not the most appealing line. But we could go an Archimancer plus Warboss. And that's still quite mana efficient and doesn't use our treasure. Or we can just jam Ourobrask and hit for 8. And then hope to pick up some more lands along the way. Yeah, close call. I think uh, we'll go with Ourobrask. Playing Ognus, also an option. Since we can grow it with a Puppeteer. Opponent does trade off. And Ourobrask will exile their top card. Which happens to be Sarith. So they'll be forced to play that if they don't want it to go to waste. And we found our land. Okay. So now I'm kind of liking a Narcomancer plus Ognus to use up all our mana. As opposed to Legion War Boss. And then just attack with Orobrask. Make a treasure. And we're starting to ramp towards God Pharaoh's Gift. Opponent Exiles Chapel, which they can easily play. So they've got 7 mana for a Liliana Death's Majesty. Gonna make a zombie. Great Henshin Graveyard. And yeah, we got to untap with Orobrask a few times. Finds Hellrider, also quite powerful. So, what to do here? Can play 3 mana Hellrider, plus a war boss, make a whole bunch of treasure, and then maybe I'm fine with one creature dying to Sarith. Um, or I can just play an Inferno, which finishes off Liliana. And that's kind of a cleaner solution overall. Even though we kind of waste our Hellrider. How scared are we of Liliana? Minus 7 could be problematic. I think getting a Hellrider in play is probably fine. And then we can always damage Liliana with Hellrider as well. And our opponent explodes. Alright, I guess Hellrider is just too much for them to handle. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Domri, red-green aggro, and our hand's not bad. Could use a removal spell, but uh, an explosive start potentially with turn 2 on Archimancer. Opponent's got their own ramp creature. And we want to play as many red sources as possible so we can play Adversary plus Chandra next turn. Although maybe just going for Ognis is better. Opponent's got the Blazing Sky, 4-4 four, four blocker. So, yeah, that kind of stops our attacks with Adversary and Ognis. And also pressures Chandra. Since they can play Domri next turn to give it one extra power. So this kind of halts our entire offense. I think playing Ognis and having our opponent find Ognis as opposed to Narcomancer is still probably our best bet. And then we can swoop in with Goldspan to finish off Domri. So Ognis down. And a Paradise Druid, that's fine. Okay, so... 
play Goldspan. Attack Domery and then does an Archimancer one attack to potentially trade for Paradise Druids. Um, might be a fine trade, given that we'll get extra mana from the Goldspan Dragon here. Opponent takes it. And I don't think we play anything else. Can maybe play Vorinclex and then Chandra to get double loyalty. Ah, opponent replays Domri. Fighting Goldspan would be a trade. And then Vorinclex can clean up. So it wouldn't be the worst. Be nothing but dust when I'm done. Opponent makes treasure, so they could still have a follow-up. They have enough mana to adapt Incubation Druids, although they get fewer counters from Vorinclex, so if they would be forced to adapt in response and then their creatures will be tapped. So I think that still works out in our favor. And then probably just Vorinclex attacking Domri. And then if they were to adapt, they only get one counter. So Domri should still die. Oh, looks like you're all mouth and, no hand. and pass it back. So really hoping for a removal spell, so we can replay it with Adversary or maybe Chandra. Partner's pretty good, but does get nerfed by Vorinclex. Although Gargroth, just a powerful creature here. And gonna get in with haste to attack and trigger right away. Yeah, that's a good one. So we need a good top deck. Hazaret's not the worst. As an indestructible blocker. If we can empty out our hands. So, I guess we'll uh, go for it here. Chandra at 8 loyalty. Play Hazrets. Play Adversary. And then Chandra just gonna add loyalty since the elementals don't really accomplish much. And pass it back. So we can attempt to block Gargroth now. Thorn Mammoth, ouch. Okay, that can find Vorinclex, and that will unlock the partners to add two counters once again. 9 9 Elder Gargroth. I guess we're still happy to triple block here. Gear growth down. Time to cycle thickets. Puppeteer the draw. So nothing to replay with Chandra. Play Puppeteer. Or we can play Ognis, but they don't really have amazing attacks here. So we're just gonna hang back. And pass. Arlen, make a pair of wolves. And a questing beasts. Can grow up to a 6-6. Six, six. But our opponent's gonna pump one of the wolves. We might just be dead if they attack with all. Yep, take 8 exactly. All right, GG's, on to the next one. All right, we're on the play. Sadly missing red mana, so this is going to be a mulligan. This is better. Turn one ginger brew, turn two big spender. And then we're just a green mana away from the partner's 
And of course we can use Ognis for mana fixing as well, thanks to those treasures. Alright, there's our green. Big spender, one of the newer alchemy cards, if you're unfamiliar with it. And yeah, Turgrid's going to foretell on turn two, so most likely a discard spell. And I guess we'll get this Blooming Marsh in play and hit for three. Sadly, no turn three play. So we can expect this to be a Skull Raid making me discard two. In which case, there's an interesting decision here on what to get rid of. Could just go discard land and partners to play Hasty Hazards. Massacre for one, gonna wipe our boards, and there's not much we can do about it. So now I might play Ognis, because partners doesn't add counters anywhere, and Hazard cannot attack by herself. Although now we could play a Puppeteer, sit for four. And then if they make me discard two, I can still keep Hazarets. Yeah, maybe that's fine. Don't want Hazarets to necessarily be the only creature in play, because then a sacrifice ability can still potentially get rid of it through Indestructible. And yeah, put in playing cards like Fericus Libation, which would synergize with Turgrid, so that makes sense. Okay, so now what? Could play Partners, or we can run out Hazard plus Signet, so Hazard can attack, but then we potentially run into another Sacrifice effect. Maybe that's just gonna be a necessity here. Alternative would be Ognis, but then I'm not allowed to play Signet, because then a discard to effect would get rid of both creatures. Potent potentially also hanging on to Fatal Push with Fabled Passage to enable Revolt, which would have been able to kill any of my other four drops. Their opponent is down to 12, 5 mana, they could finally play Turgrid. It's gonna be a ring first. And a soul shatter, yep, that's the perfect answer to Hazard, sadly. Can follow up with Phoenix plus Pump. Or we can play Ognis, make a treasure. And then if they make me discard two, we can still escape our Phoenix of Ash next turn. Yeah, sure. Mindrake makes us discard two cards. So if this is Cold Raid, they could draw two with it. Yep. Alright, opponent is at 10, and we can escape Phoenix plus pump it at least once. And then no way of getting back my creatures, so I should probably get rid of the better ones in case the opponent can get them back somehow. So get them down to 2. If our opponent were to wipe the board, we probably want to let Ognis go to the graveyard so we can escape Phoenix of Ash. And then by exiling Ognis from our graveyard, it will go back to the command zone. And your opponent packs it in, our hasty Phoenix of Ash is gonna get there even if they do somehow wipe the board onto the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing the Wandering Emperor. So, lines up quite well against our hasty creatures. This hand seems keepable enough. Fetch up maybe a mountain. And then we've got a bit of early removal, followed by crew captain into Ognis. 
Could have kept Overlook as a Revolt Enabler for Fatal Push. But uh, can always take out a Samurai token from the Emperor. Alright, Bowman Courier is not bad. So, can play Bowman Courier and then keep a Fatal Push. As opposed to playing this tapped, seems okay. And then can play this on green to enable Crew Captain. Compass, so yeah, definitely looks like a more controlling deck overall. Hellrider's not bad. So if we can find land number four, we can either go for Ognis or Hellrider. And there's our land. Kind of lanking Ognis here just to make some treasure. So it's going to be easier to deploy Ourobrask. And by making a lot of treasure, it's going to be easier to empty your hands and then Beaumont Courier also becomes more effective. Since there's a good chance that Feed This form and Fatal Push are not going to be all that amazing. Opponent could easily have a 4-mana Wrath effect to wipe the board, but then we still get to follow up with maybe Ourobrask or Hellrider. Day of Judgment cleans up the board. Heartless Act, more removal, which we don't really need. So the one problem with Ourobrask is our opponent just being able to play Wandering Emperor to clean it up. But if they do, then Hellrider can finish off Wandering Emperor after it minuses. And our opponent will still waste their next draw step. Potentially, so... I think that's fine. So down to 7 they go. And they exile the land, lucky for them. Run away. Emperor exiles Urbrask. And Hellrider gets to finish off Wandering Emperor, can even play a Domri first. So we could finish off Emperor, or we can just go face here. And then we've got plenty of removal to clear the tokens that the Emperor would generate. I guess that's it. So our opponent caches an Emperor, they could replay it to then minus once again. Banishing Light instead, that we can destroy with Feet this Swarm. Goes for Domri, so they have answers for Hellrider potentially. Replicating Ring. Okay. So if I feed the Swarm, we can no longer play Butcher, as will be short on mana. So. Yeah, I guess a little bit light on black. But I can feed the swarm and then minus with Domri to fight, and then our opponent's still dead. And I guess just killing the token would work too. Didn't realize my opponent was at four. And that does it. Sweet. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw. Hand seems reasonable, up against two heavens as one. So kind of a creature attack trigger deck. And uh, now that we drew Goldspan, our Fearsome Whelp is looking a lot more exciting. So play tapped Cemetery, turn two Mountain, turn three Marsh. So all our lands come into play untapped. Opponent gets to start with an Arcane Signet. We get to start with a Fearsome Whelp. And then with a stimulus package, we would love to make lots of treasure, and Goldspan also reinforces that plan. So for now, Stormseeker. Give itself hastes. Smash. Opponent's gonna get to draw twice with Audacious Thief, potentially. That's fine. And next turn we can already play Goldspan if we'd like. Rip apart, kill Stormseeker. 
and a Croxon to make us discard. A land can go. Alrighty, so three mana gold span. Pass it back. And our opponent concedes, yeah, the fearsome whelp, very fearsome indeed. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Thassa Deep Dwelling, so flicker deck. And our hand's okay. Could use some more haste creatures early on, but turn one Beaumont Courier. Can always sack it to a deadly dispute to help us ramp towards Darigas. Alright, so probably fine to keep a power word kill, or we can play tapped crossroads to get that out of the way. So attack first and then we'll play our tap lands and probably either black or green. Let's go with green since we do need double green for some cards. And a Captain Lannery seems like a perfect turn 3 play now. Fibblethip can maybe trade for Beaumont Courier. So I'm probably not going to attack next turn but then we will maybe attack once again if we play Ognis to get that extra treasure. Possible they don't even want to trade since they can flicker with Thassa to draw, but they might have a better ETB effect on turn 3 here. It's gonna be a midnight clock. Still leaves up one mana, so they could still have some interaction here, including a counter spell for Ognis. That would be a little bit unfortunate, but I think we should still give it a shot. And then we could power word kill Fibblethip after making another treasure with Captain Landry. So they can't trade, and then we'll get three tapped treasures, so that's still enough for Darigas next turn. So really hoping there's no counterspell here. Opponent's got a Brainstorm, that's okay. So we'll attack with all. Make some treasure. And power word kill Fibblethip. And then next turn we're looking at a hasty Darigas to add on to the pressure. And at that point we're maybe happy to sack Beaumont Courier to refresh our hand as well. Emery for two mana, gets to mill. So no artifacts to get back just yet, and a far finder to get a land. Okay. So they've got a few blockers, but no real answers. And uh, yeah, get to play Darigas. Pump Slattery a bunch. And our opponent has seen enough. Yeah, we could attack with all. Make four tapped treasure plus one untapped treasure, which can maybe help us sacrifice Beaumont Courier as well. So I might end up playing the thicket tapped first. So we only discard two cards to potentially draw four. All right. So yeah, we got to see our Junt's Ognis Haste deck in action. And it certainly delivers if you get to curve out. There's a few tap lands that can maybe mess you up, but overall I've tried to include as many untap lands as possible, so you get the chance to go 1, 2, 3, and then Ognis on 4 usually sets you up for victory on the following turn if you've got a good hand. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.